Victory for democracy, Israel postpones controversial judicial reforms. Let me put it this way. Israel is in turmoil. After weeks of protests, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has finally agreed to delay a plan that would give the Knesset, the National Legislature of Israel, control over judicial appointments and let them rule overrule the Supreme Court's decisions. This proposal has been causing outrage in the country and has been described as a threat to Israel's democracy, with massive protests and even a general strike taking place. The religious right wing's influence on the proposed changes is evident in the makeup of Netanyahu's coalition government, which includes several far right in right wing parties, excuse me, religious parties. However, the protests against the proposed changes, described as the largest in Israel's history, have also been diverse, with people from across the political and religious spectrum speaking out against them. Despite this, Netanyahu has no plans to drop the bill altogether. So Armin, I know that this is something that's very important to you, and you've been sending me a lot of news about this, so I wanted to talk about it. Give give us, like, what do you... Give me everything. What are you well, thinking about, friend? But, I mean, I can't give you everything because that would make it... Uh, I could do a two-hour stream right now on this specific topic alone. Do it, do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think I can. Um, I don't know even where to start. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Um, first of all, let's talk about the significance of this, right? We are talking about the end of democracy and liberalism, and that is not an exaggeration. That is not an exaggeration. Sometimes people are exaggerate. This will make Israel an, an illiberal country if all of this happens, right? Um, however, Netanyahu is has put himself in a position where he has, to, for his own personal gain, he has to destroy Israel. So it's not like he would go back. Like no matter how many people go into the streets, right um other people have to force him it's not going to be for the sake of israel he's not going to stop this because he has signed a deal with the devil and by the devil i mean religious parties in israel right which is worse than the devil right and if he loses their support his whole coalition will break apart so they have him, these, these racist, far-right religious parties have Netanyahu by the balls, okay? Because, so the people are pressuring the entire country for Netanyahu to stop going and pushing forward with these reforms. But if he does that, if he does that, and he loses the support from the religious parties and the coalition breaks apart, Netanyahu could be facing jail time. Right. This is Netanyahu. Uh, it's not just about m remaining a prime minister. This this ha it would be a win win for Netanyahu and all these far right religious parties, because um, what they're doing is they're trying to take complete control over the judicial system. And by doing that, it benefits both of them. Right. The far right religious parties, and it's weird for us to separate far right from Netanyahu because we used to think of Netanyahu as far right, but Netanyahu compared looks like a commie right now next to these mofos. That's You're how not far kidding! Right is. Holy crap! Yeah, he's like I've never looked at Netanyahu as like a left wing person, but he seems like, like oh, left he's so moderate. <laughs> yeah, next to these guys, he's the he's moderate, right? So the deal, like. Ma maintaining control like if if the if they get to control the judicial system uh one gets to use it to stay at, to put all the judges that you require to stay out of jail which is netanyahu and the other one just gets to destroy liberalism and remove all the rights that gay people and women and minorities and religious minorities and arabs and secularists and atheists might enjoy in a country right and uh, you could start brainwashing children and this is and you, you all the all the edu all the limits that these religious people have over education all of that could be gone and as fascist as these people look you have no idea how worse it could get when 
when you start raising children and brainwash them for future generations and they will take control over the army which i have to mention so netanyahu came up with a solution netanyahu came up with a solution right so by the way i don't i don't want to even nerd out right now over political philosophy and why this is uh, de destroying the very foundations of how we understand modern democracies work like people i don't know if people understand that the separations of powers within a government is the right is how democracy is supposed to work that's how ever since montesquieu we understand that this is this is the model that we should go with so these people who think like oh well it's democracy they got voted in so why why would the court system limit their uh, limit the laws that they want to pass these are people who don't even understand how democracies work like we have absolute democracies which is a form of tyranny of the majority and we have liberal democracies so what we want is a liberal democracy which there's a limitations of what the judicial branch um so i'm sorry on what the legislative branch can do and the limitations are um enforced using a constitution or something like a constitution with the judicial branch. So with that wall between the judicial branch and the um, legislative branch being broken apart, you have the very foundations of a liberal democracy being destroyed, right? So what has been the solution? We were like, okay, Netanyahu is stuck between a rock and a hard place. From one side, the whole country is being turned apart, right? Um, and we have the greatest revolution in the middle east now even passing the masses revolution which is amazing it's very impressive by the way every single israeli that is fighting for your to save your country we see you and we're proud of you thank you for fighting for liberalism you we need you to do that because the entire middle east and maybe the rest of the world depends on israel surviving israel is a tiny country that influenced the entirety of the rest of the planet that in that affects the superpower that is the united states and without israel being a liberal democracy we are fucked right so please keep fighting we are all relying on you for this to work out um, because if that ship goes down, you know, a lot of other countries are going to go down with it, right? So there's that. But here's the thing. So Netanyahu was stuck between, I keep trying to finish this thought and I keep getting distracted by other things. But Netanyahu is stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? When is the, all these people in the streets, a major, major revolution happening, uh, the whole country being in, on the verge of collapse, both ideologically and economically and almost everything else, right? Um, but the other one being the the other side being um, is that him um, not going with the reform and losing the coalition, right? So he had to come up with a solution. He had to come up with getting all these other religious parties to give them something so that they accept the delay of the reforms, right? The, of the of these laws being passed, right? So what and they now they seem to have come up with something you know what he gave them do you know what netanyahu is giving them i don't know if if that is gone through yet he's but giving you know ben gavir like a private militia yeah there's their, their own part of the army so now these religious uh nut jobs are gonna get their own private army in return for delaying some of these these reforms so I don't know if we should be going yay or like holy crap. That's terrifying. So the These fascists are, are getting yeah yeah the fascists are get are getting the fascists in Israel are getting their own private army. That's what they're getting. So yes, it's pretty insane. Yeah, yeah. The, they yeah. are some of the most virulently racist people I have ever known to exist yeah these like fascist settlers holy crap like it's it's so terrifying <laughs> so i have you weren't kidding when you're talking about israel being pulled apart because netanyahu when he announced that he was putting in a delay on it he literally said that i'm doing this to avoid a civil war he used the words civil Slow. war yeah Holy crap. One. Mm. Two, um, you 
said that this has surpassed the Masa revolution in Iran. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, in what it has been able to achieve, and I think the numbers. Oh, people actually in the streets? Yeah. That's a good point. Hmm. Yeah. I, interesting. And I'm, I'm going to have to think about some things later. Um. Oh, my God. Okay, so I mean, then the next thing... The Go ahead. The whole region is going through many different revolutions, right? We have the master revolution. We have this. We have the Turkey elections coming up. Oh, uh, like God. we are, yeah, right. So mm. we are, guys. We are seeing the the forces, the fights between religious extremism, right, and yeah. liberalism all over the place, right. So three, there are three key countries right now that liberalism is trying to survive. It's trying to, you know, and it's. We have Israel. In the next year, we're going to see if liberalism survives in the Middle East. Turkey, Israel, and Iran are the key countries to watch. Oh, God, help me. So what yeah. is your speculation about if these will be thrown out for good or if theirs are going to go through? Personally, I think that they're probably going to go through. I can't imagine them. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, the people, I, I, you know what? I don't know because on one side, I know these right leaning parties, they're not going to give up, right? They're not going to just accept this, right? Um, and, but at the same time, I know the people in the street are not going to accept this. So it's really hard to see what's going to happen. I mean, it would be, what if the coalition just breaks apart and we have, under elections, you know, another election going through. That would be amazing. That'd be, that, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. He fired his defense minister because yeah, the minister that's... didn't accept the reforms anymore. He did at first, mm -hmm. and then he rejected the reforms when he realized that there was such a large percentage of reservists who would not do their job if this mm. went through so he's like yeah, this yeah, yeah. threatens the security of the nation of, a, of the nation yeah so yeah. i have to do and then because of that netanyahu fired him yeah yeah by the way when it comes to the branding of the people um i think this is does uh, i'm just going to give you a silver lining okay people who you know how a lot of people could not could not see the separation between the people of Iran and the government of Iran. Mm -hmm. The Mahsa revolution made people separate them from, you know, the judgment becoming a little bit more nuanced. And I think now this is going to do the same thing with the Israeli people. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people judge the Israeli people based on the crimes committed by their government. And I mm -hmm. think like now a lot more people are going to have a lot more nuanced view and separate these from each other. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a silver lining. What do you think of the people who criticize this and they say that this is only a democracy movement for Israeli Jews? Well, I mean, it's literally the opposite because the people who are in charge are trying to make this country only for Jews. Mm. Right? Even I mean, more, even seen, more so than it already is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these people, if you are on the side of Israeli Arabs, you have to hope these protesters are successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Arabs, I mean, a lot of Arabs are joining these protests. The people are, the Arabs and Jewish Israelis are united, and many of them are united in these protests. Mm -hmm. A lot of the signs are in Arabic. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people I, on the news and analysts, they were saying that this is, essentially it's it's hypocritical though to be fighting for democracy when you're an occupying state well i mean you're going to be um it, it's kind of like this is a black and white fallacy right it will be worse for those people you are actually doing what you're accusing those people of right so you are this these are people who only care about virtue signaling rather than actually rather than those arabs because mm. 
You know what I mean? So because you are like, oh, you're not even a democracy, so why are you protesting? But by that line of narrative, by that narrative, you are going to make Arabs' lives even worse. So you're mm-hmm. not actually caring about the consequences of what you're pushing for. You just mm-hmm. care about just having a, a label and be like, well, it's not really this, so f you. Well, no, f you. You are the one who actually show is, is demonstrating that you don't don't care about the lives of the actual experiences of Arabs living in Israel, because their lives would be a lot worse under these uh, far right religious parties. So if you actually care for them, you should be supporting the protests. That's a good point. That's a good point, Armin. Wait, let me actually sh- show you. Did you see what Netanyahu's son said? He has a lot of conspiracy theories. Which, what specifically? How old um, is his son? Now I'm curious. He said, Netanyahu's son said that these protesters are... Iranian backed people. They're they're this is an Iranian conspiracy. The Iran conspiracy. Yo. I was like, did he just pull the Khamenei? Did he just he pull did. the Khamenei? He, he did. did. That's so like, funny. Because in the news analysis I was watching about this, they kept on talking about all the conspiracies. And then I was like, if you're a Zionist Israeli, who do you point as being <laughs> the cause of your pro- your conspiracies? <laughs> Since all the other conspiracies are about you being in charge, who do you blame when you have a conspiracy? <laughs> so yeah, I was thinking, I was like, maybe, yeah, Iran, maybe the Saudis, like, I'd I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Dark, I was saying. I wonder who they are in his case. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, exactly. So he's saying that uh, Biden's. Oh, so no. So here's here's the actual accusation. So he says by Bi- is Biden funding the protesters because of Iran, you know, so that he could pressuring Netanyahu, pressuring his father to go back to the deal with Iran, something like that. Let me actually see if I could get that. What? Oh, yeah. So here, let me see. Wait, let me think about this for a second. So Biden wants Israel to not be so up in arms about the nuclear deal. So to do that, he causes mass protests i don't see how that would help biden yeah so here here Yair, this is yet Yair Netanyahu's whose allegations is the american state department is behind the protests in israel wow. mm. with the aim of overthrowing netanyahu apparently in order to con- to conclude an agreement with the iranians what yeah so that's netanyahu's son that's i that's the conspiracy theory here my word (laughs) word. yeah (laughs) shriash is saying blame the jewish british catholic homosexual elite and their ideals (laughs) (laughs) just all the categories at once Blame them. By the way, this is Israel. You know, Israel's relationship with the United States is such a crucial part of its. Oh, yeah. Exists. No, I was going to say political uh, foreign affairs, but for Israel, it's foreign affairs is its existence. It's all right. So Israel is now having not as good of a relationship with the United States as it's used to. And that is really dangerous for Israel. That is really dangerous for Israel. Uh, and Netanyahu, for his own personal gain, is putting Israel in so much danger by doing all of this, right? And another thing, young Jews in the United States are not at all, you know, are much less likely to support Israel than their parents. So going, you know, so going forward, young Jewish people in in the United States are liberal, right? And if Israel is not liberal, they're not going to, just because they're Jews, because 
Israel really relies on Jewish people in mm -hmm. America supporting Israel. They are a voting base that Israel relies on just to make sure that the United States has the politics that Israel likes. And a lot of Jews in the United States, go, in, in the next couple of generations growing up, they're going to have no allegiances or no ties or no sympathy to Israel at all, especially because they'd be liberal and Israel be conservative. More than conservative, far right, fascist, right? So at that point, Israel is going to lose that, that connection with the United States, and that would be devastating. That would be very dangerous for them. Oh, thank you. GJ saying good, good points from Armin. <laughs> all right we need I'm trying to... to look up is it true that there are more jews in the united states than israel okay no that's not true it's fifth i think it was 50 um no there's 50 50 inside and outside let me see uh, it's israel. rough yeah. chat gdp says that israel has 6.9 million and the u.s has 5.7 million so okay. almost the second Almost. largest. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, obviously, because we have this, yeah, nearly half of the diaspora in the U.S. Like that relationship is critical. Well, not not half of the diaspora. Half of the global Jews. diaspora. Okay. Okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.